Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the fifth chakra, the throat chakra, also known as the Vishuddha chakra in Sanskrit. So it is obviously located in our throat, so think about from the tops of the shoulders through up to basically your mouth, and it's associated with not only what we speak, what we express out into the world, but what we hear as well, what we take in, and how we take that information in and either repress it or express it, how we basically communicate with the world. So it's not just what's put out into the world, but the communications that are received as well. Uh, this chakra is also associated with the color blue. I like to think of like kind of a lighter, bright, fluorescent kind of blue, um, whereas the third eye is kind of like a darker blue, kind of with a little bit of a purple tint to it. And it is associated with the element of space. So the lower four chakras are all earth elements. And as we come up into the upper three chakras, they're more ethereal, they're less physical in nature. So this is like a bottleneck of the body. It is the connector from our head to our heart. So we can have lots of really great ideas and um, concepts and we have to be able to move them down into the body through the lower ch chakras, sorry, to manifest, to actually get them into physical existence in our life and so if we have issues with any chakras between our head and our root then manifesting is going to be very difficult for us and other way around too so the current of liberation goes up if we have very constricted or excessive throat chakra then expressing how we feel and what um, our body is doing physically and how we're emotionally doing into the world and how we can make sense of that will um, be off as well. So this is really where we get to communicate and express our authenticity or repress who we are, what we feel, and how we show up in the world. Um, abuses to this chakra would be anything that would repress our ability to express our true nature, to express what we feel, to express how we feel. So when we're children, if we do not feel it is safe to tell what is true to us, like have you ever told your parents like, I didn't do that and your parents don't believe you and they call you a liar and it's like very... Um, hurtful because you feel like no one sees you for who you are or what you say doesn't matter or you're not allowed to have an opinion at all or you get in trouble for even just being yourself like being loud and silly and obnoxious the older you get the more you get shamed and shut down for being authentic and showing up vibrant in your expected society expects us to mature so and the ideal of our society as far as maturity goes is basically showing up holding your emotions down and not being authentic like how many people have said to you I'd rather they just tell me to my face instead of behind my back but when you actually tell people to their face what you think often they get triggered and they blow up and they don't want to be your friend anymore so it's a very interesting dynamic when society in general wants to make people all into these like little boxes like if you don't fit into this box at school and you know keep your mouth shut comply then you're not going to be accepted, you're not going to be socially accepted into the world, into the workforce, etc. And that's why there's so many like 
personality disorders and things like that that I find aren't really disorders at all. It's just children that are being lumped into a category that's out of normal and by out of normal it's just not what's ideal for a teacher to have as a student or not what's ideal to have in a specific workplace and so then they get ostracized and categorized as something that's bad or there's something wrong with them and then they forever have this lens that they look at themselves and speak to themselves that is negative because they're not compliant if that makes sense so when looking at this chakra in your own life do you speak your truth? Do you show up and be yourself? Are you outright with people? Doesn't mean you have to be rude or obnoxious, but like, do you say yes when you mean no because you don't want to rock the boat? Do you um, pretend you don't like things that you do because you don't want to seem weird? Are you scared to say you like things because you don't want to um, stand out from the crowd? Are you submissive and constantly just allow people to say whatever they want to you, do whatever they want to you because you are terrified to express how you feel because of the way they may react? Or vice versa, are you one of those loud, dominating people that comes into the room and walks all over people with your attitude and your words and makes other people feel like they need to shut down to be around you? Or are you balanced? Can you tell people how you feel in a way that um, is authentic to you but not dominating to them? Can you slow down and listen when other people are talking to you? Are you constantly thinking of your response to what they're saying before they're even done talking so you don't even get to hear what they're saying because you're so involved in your own internal chatter? The words we speak to ourselves without saying them out loud influence this chakra. They affect our vibration. This chakra is all about vibrations in the body. Words carry vibrations. Um, the word uh, abracadabra actually means I create what I speak. So we speak words out into the world and we create the life that we see around us. We manifest how we talk to ourselves, how we speak, how we show up in the world, what we believe. That will show up and manifest in our lives because that's the vibration that we're on. You notice a lot of people that are um, very low vibration, very down in the dumps, they'll listen. It's almost like they have their own style and their own music that that's like stereotypical of those people to listen to. Whereas like people who are super high vibe, it's like a totally different resonance. When we sing, when we listen to the beat in a music, it literally moves our body and we can feel it affecting us on a cellular level. And that's because that frequency um, creates change in our body. Our water molecules in our body react to that frequency. So when we speak from our throat chakra, it creates vibrations that vibrate through the body and they vibrate out into the world. And people can pick up on that. So how are you speaking to yourself? Are you saying words of love and encouragement? When you're in a yoga pose, and you're holding chair for two minutes and your legs feel like they're gonna fall off, are you saying, you've got this girl, you're so strong, I can't believe you made it this far, or are you saying, you're so weak, you're so dumb, I can't believe how weak you are, oh, you already quit two times, everyone's better than you, blah, blah, blah. How are you talking to yourself? How are you feeling in the body? connecting the head with the heart. If your body feels a knee-jerk reaction to a certain person, you're picking up their frequency and their vibe and it's affecting you. And so when you have a clear course of energy flow through the chakras, you can pick up in your per perception that your body does not feel comfortable around this person and then you can take action 
to remove yourself from the situation or not be around that person as much. When your body um, is reacting to certain foods, you'll be mindful of that. Oh, I don't feel good after I eat this food. Maybe I won't eat this food anymore, etc. So it's like this communication center. It's like a highway for communication with how we perceive, how we think, how we view the world and certain dynamics between people and food and life and music and how that feels in our heart, how that feels in our stomach, how that feels in our sexual center, in our legs and our feet. When I get scared, my feet start to tingle. Even if I watch a video of someone like, I don't know if you've ever watched those videos where someone's like on the edge of a high rise building and they're like doing cartwheels and like they hang off the side and they're like, think they're hilarious. And my feet will literally start to tingle because I'm like scared for them and I'm terrified of heights. So it's like listening to the nuances of the body and what our body is communicating to us and having that communicate with our perception, with our rational mind. So then we can take it in and say, okay, that is a real threat or that's actually just me, a knee-jerk response to something. So think about not only how you talk to yourself, how you feel in the body, how you communicate with others. Do you dominate the conversation? But where does this come from? If you're one of those people who's really, really pushy and dominating with your words and loud and proud and in your face... How was your childhood? Were you constantly um, repressed? Were you told to shut up that your voice didn't matter? I feel like I'm, I have a very excessive throat chakra. I talk a lot. I, when I write, I don't write very direct. I have to write like really long, detailed, flowery um, paragraphs to get out what I'm thinking. Um, and when I was a child, it I had so many opinions and I was so... I guess I felt like unseen because I lived with my grandma and my parents in my mind had abandoned me. So in order to like make up for that, it's like I had to yell at the world, look at me, I'm here, I'm here. And um, then when I obviously got into my adolescence, that created a lot of issues for me, not only with my peers because I was so extra and so loud and so in your face type of person and very argumentative but also with the parental figures because um you know they're trying to create rules and boundaries and i'm just trying to push them and break them and do anything i can to not submit into a boundary and for other people it might be the other way around like my sisters are very like they have constricted throat chakras where they have a hard time speaking up on their behalf. They have a hard time defending themselves and um, telling people how they feel and allowing their emotions to come out. Um, so some really healing practices for this chakra is to make noise. So when you're working out or having sex or whatever, actually allowing the sounds that are naturally occurring in your body to come out. Like when you when I do a sit-up and I crunch in, I go... <sighs> And I like, I, I make sound and I really force that air out of my body and I don't let it stay in. Sometimes I can't do it anymore because I live in town, but when I lived on a farm, if I was having a bad day and I felt anger boil up in my body, I would just go and stand out on my deck and just scream and just let, let it out of my body. And it's healthy to find ways where you can express. Maybe that could be singing or breathing really heavy or just doing some sort of noise that just like <sighs> that gets the sound and that aggression out of your body instead of repressing it repressing it that's why journaling is very helpful for people because they can get words out of their body that they've been holding in that's why talking to a therapist or a psychologist can be very healing for people because they have all these feelings in their body, in their heart, from things that they've been told, from traumas that have happened to them that they've repressed and they haven't allowed to be spoken. And having that heaviness of that trauma or that situation or that feeling 
out of their body and expressing it and sharing it and communicating it to somebody um, can allow that heaviness to leave the body. It can get it off of their chest, so to speak. Um, another thing with this chakra, not just of communication between two people, but it's because it's a center of expression and how we communicate to the world, it's very related to um, our artistic abilities. So how we express ourselves, how we express ourselves. Um, we have an idea in our mind and we put it out into the world through action, through the inspiration from our sacral chakra. So it's like that connection from the root and from the crown and it pulls into the center and we express it out into the world. Our arms, a lot of people talk with their arms, are kind of the top of our shoulder. It's part of our heart chakra, but they can also be a part of our throat chakra because they help us to express, especially if we speak with sign language, this would be how we express out to the world. Um, so creating visual images, if you're a creative person in general and you create you know, custom designs for homes. If you're the person who lays out blueprints or does interior design or paints cars or um, fabricates different um, stereo systems. My husband um, has this guy who built him a system for his truck where he custom designs the boxes for the subs and they have intricate designs within the box and outside of it it all works with sound and how sound vibrates so that it has the perfect um, pitch when the subs bounce inside of the box and it's very interesting and so creating all of that starts in our mind and we have to move this idea this um, thing that we can visualize inside and express it out into the world and create it and manifest it on the earth plane. Um, this is probably the most interesting chakra in my opinion. It's definitely my most dominant chakra, and my favorite one to work with. So I hope you found value in this video. Be sure to stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't already to be updated with the next two chakras. As well, I'll be doing a throat chakra yoga flow on Wednesday on this channel. So make sure to hit the subscribe button to be updated with that content. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye!